Get I'm away. trying to get back to that know you. Because it's crazy because I was a claim to Magnolia and I wasn't from the Magnolia. And while I was in juvenile jail, my mother moved to the Magnolia. Back then, we used to wear red t shirts with LTI on it in uh, Louisiana Training Institution. I had juvenile life at this time, so you gotta keep in mind, this is like in 1991, I don't get out to 96 somewhere. Not new surveillance video capturing a teen moments after breaking out of a juvenile detention center. Juveniles escaped from a detention center last night. So first of all, Jeremy, let's talk about how quickly they got out here. So tra actually, Tracy, we timed it right here where their teens first step out of. It takes them only 29 seconds to get from here to outside the building. In 1991, Terrence Williams, known as Lil Gangsta at the time, anxious to hit the streets, would escape from LTI. Louisiana Training Institute for Boys. How juvenile was set up, we used to go to the infirmary up front to get our medication at night. We get up front, we sit down, so that we see a car coming. Well, they see the car coming, they got lights on. They said, that's them. I said, I ain't them, sit down. I'm, I'm nervous, right? <laughs> so they turn around, they come back. They said, man, that's them, we just jump up, we run. So as we run in the gate, it's wide open now. They park right here, the gate run wide open. Killer Stone will be released from juvenile jail in 93. Stone would convince his protege, Baby Gangster, to carve out for probation and hit the Noya with him. Gangster would take Stone up on his offer and take the probation. In 94, after putting in work, Terrence would drop the Lil from his name and become Gangster. Mosquito and Gangster would be childhood friends who came up together. In 94, a failed robbery attempt would lead to one of Gangsta's partners shooting someone in the leg. One of his friends tried to rob my friend again, and my friend shot him, shot him in the leg. After hearing about this shooting, Sterling would come looking for Gangsta and Mosquito. And Sterling came looking for me and Mosquito. So we had got word that this older guy, you know, he wasn't that older than us, but he, he had a uh, reputation at the time for robbing and shooting. You know, he had a, a lot of people were scared of him and he was looking for us. So uh, one day we coming out the Magnolia Project riding our bikes, heading home and Sterling coming up the street. And then back then we had a little 22 pistols. So Sterling passed us and we stopped and he stopped. And we just was looking at each other. And he was like, who that is? We like, well, who that is? This encounter would be the first time that Sterling, Mosquito and Gangsta would actually meet. They would all discuss the shooting and go their separate ways. They would all later meet again in jail. And he was like, this story was like, oh, you know, this, this little gangster and this mosquito. He was like, oh yeah, I heard y'all shot my boy. And he was like, yeah, he tried to rob my boy. So we talked, but then we went our separate ways. And then uh, we met back up in jail and we all, actually wound up forming the Hot Boy Click in 1994. The Hot Boys would be famous in the mean streets of New Orleans for guns, drugs, money, and murder. Brian Williams of Cash Money Records would later adopt the name for his new rap group. As far as the hot boys, it really come from Giggity. If y'all know him, he out there know you. He was the original hot boy and he just was like, gave us the flavor. Meanwhile, back here at home and new this morning, New Orleans police investigating a deadly shooting from overnight. New Orleans police are investigating a deadly triple shooting. Let's take one last look at this morning's top stories. A man is dead after being shot overnight. Several people were shot last night in separate incidents in a four hour span. The latest shooting left one man dead, another injured in Central City. Span of about two hours, two people were killed and three others injured, all in separate shootings across New Orleans. A lot of murders committed in broad daylight. And a guy just walk up to another guy and just shoot him 20, 30 times. And that's pretty much how it was growing up in the Magnolia Project. Sterling, Dooney, Mosquito, my best friend, the original hot boys, right? Yeah. 
We crushed a lot of people. 24 people shot in just four days. And yes, you heard that correctly, 24. And that is just in the city of New Orleans. We've done a lot of dirt. I've left the game alone. So if someone pulls me back into, in the streets. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. Then I'm out there head first and it's like, I have to make a movie so everybody that got away with a lot of stuff in my past, I gotta go back and revisit that and come back out here now. Okay. See, this is the thing, he, he, he did a lot of line recap. I'm in the project, I had a green Q45 with bow to the man on the license plate. I come in the, in the project, I see Sterling sitting on the porch. And I, I remember like uh, the weekend before that, we was oh, like we used to always go out to Biloxi Beach and hang out, like have little parties and get together, the back noise. So the guys at the uh, Idleville project came out there. Now there was already a little beef going on with Mosquito who was dealing with that Idleville project because he was living back there. So they come, they pull up, and then uh, I pull up in the parlor. I see them looking across the street where the beach is stuff at. So I see this this uh, known stepper named Mums. I'm like, man, what's up? I'm like, nah, man. Uh, we, we see, I say, oh, stolen over there because Mums and Stolen real tight. You want me to go get them so I can? Because I know Stolen come over and talk to them. They know they good, they come over there, you know, with the, by the Magnolia. So I go get started, by the time I come back, they was gone. I'll bring you back up to speed. So now, when I come to the project, I see started on the pool, I'm like, man, what's up, you wanna go to, on Canal Street, go to Full Locker and get some shoes, some tennis shoes? Like, yeah, let's go. So now we ride, right? I take this around summertime. I remember saying, man, it's too hot to be managed by the graveyard. Now when we get to Canal Street, I was like, man, you wanna go on the Iverville project? We we'll go holler at Mumsy, because the Ivory Project is like a block behind Canal Street. So we're like, yeah, let's go. We don't got no beef with nobody in the Ivory Project. We never, you know, violated nobody in this project at the time. So we go back there, we see Mumsy. We park, get out the car, stand up, we talk. Mumsy here, I'm standing right here. Started, like right here in his back. Mumsy started facing me. Actually, right here, my car right here. There's a store right here behind me. And it's this girl from out the Ivory, from out the Nephilim Project. She's obsessed with me. And we, we've had sex a few times. So um, she like, give me a ride up to I was like, all right, sit over there, we go. We got you. So she sat over on these steps. Terrence Gangsta Williams would go on to give the gruesome details of Hot Boy Sterling's murder. Now where she's sitting at, it's like a, like, like she could sit right here in the building right here. So if you walk past, she go to see you. If you don't look to the left, you're not going to see her. She's going to see you. So, as we over this way, stand up on the sidewalk talking, the guy who, you know, he was called Skip back then, he was in the rip. Sidewalk. But now he's putting his handkerchief around his face, he got a hat on. So, me and Sterling look at each other, we look at Mums, because Mums is just telling us, like, this our project ain't nothing going to happen until you back here. Alright, and we both don't have guns on us. The guy coming. So now you start reaching in his back. So we looking. The girl said, Y'all better run, that boy got a gun. I look, oh, let's go. Right, let's go. Right, take out. I run around this driveway, I hit a shot. Keep going. Go through this, gotta hold the fit, go to the hold the fit and run across the street. They got a police station right there. I see the police. I say, give me a ride back in the present, man. My friend just got shot back here. And McCarthy are back here. So the police, all right, here, you come with some excuse. So they go back there, but I walk through the street, go back in the cut. When I go back in the cut, right where I ran, that stutter was running there. And he's laying on a, in the driveway. And the girl who I was supposed to bring up town, she's holding him in her arm. And he like, <sighs> and I'm like, and I see those shots in the back of his head, though. So that's why when, um, Rip gave the story that, uh, <laughs> yo, this was great. He said that you ran with a piece. Yeah. Cap. Let's fast forward. He just said, as I was driving around Fiddle Clary, you know, he just narrated by saying stories to see what they did. Uh, yo, he, they, they did, like I say. All this low tide, they went back and take all my stories out. Okay, I'm going to put myself here. Okay, I'm going to add this. I'm going to add that. Blah, blah, blah. All right, fine. Now, rip a little stepper out the mouth. 
You gonna forget that his brother already said he, he did a lot of capping. Yeah, man, I had to come live, man. Let everybody know what it is, man. What it is, what's sick with it, man. Want me just short and brief? I want everybody to hear this shit though, straight from the horse's mouth, man. Yeah, real talk, man. Let them know I'm on live, man. Let everybody know, man. I'm gonna be real quick with it, man. I ain't got much time. About to be twelve, man. You hear me? So check this out, man. Look. I, you know what I'm saying? I finally watched the whole video with my brother and shit. You heard me? And me being just a OG Amir's, bro. I'm, I'm like this. I called my brother up just now a while ago. I called him up. And I'm, you know, I'm asking him about the video he made. You feel what I'm saying? Because I wasn't with him when he made it. You feel me? I was supposed to be with him, but I wasn't with him. So I ain't never really get to see the whole video, you heard me? So I finally sat and just watched the whole video. And this how I feel about it, you feel what I'm saying? Everybody want to know. Look, nigga going to say what they want to say. Nigga going to do what they want to do. You can't stop nobody from saying what they want to say and do what they going to do and feel how they feel, you heard me? At the same time, when you speak on things, man, you got to think about everybody, you heard me? You got to think about everybody that's involved. You know what I'm saying? You got to think about the consequences of what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, you got to be ready from everything to come from everything you're saying, man. Real talk. And right now, I feel that he went too far. I feel he went way too far. He said way too much. And he, and he really crossed some lines, I feel. You feel what I'm saying? And that's my brother, but I'm just calling it how it is. I'm always going to be sick talk. I'm always going to be a honey. I'm always going to be all facts, man. That ain't going to change for nobody, man. I don't care who you is. That ain't going to change for no motherfucking body, man. And that's just sick talk, man. And I, like I told him, you did too much, man. You did too much. You said too much and you crossed too many lines, man. Real talk, man. You don't do no shit like that, man. What's wrong with you, man? You got to be crazy, man. But he feel like he ain't did nothing wrong. He feel like he just was expressing himself. You heard me? And I felt him on that. You was expressing yourself. But just like I told him, I say, if you really felt like that, you should have, you know, you step the people and you let them know how you feel. But if you feel like you just want to express it like that, it's a time and a place for everything. You heard me? And that wasn't the time nor place for that. Whoa. Well, Period, you really felt like that, cause I ain't know you felt like how you felt like that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't know you feel how you feel, and you ain't even, you know what I'm saying? So I'm fucked up about it because I didn't know how he felt like this. How you know? I seen the video and I'm like, damn, hold up. You know what I'm saying? They got some mixed emotions going on. What's going on, man? You know I'm like, you know, yeah, but uh. You know, the shit ain't, you know, I ain't going to say it ain't nothing because everybody might not be looking at it as nothing. So I ain't taking it as nothing. So, you know what I'm saying? I, ain't, I don't give a fuck, man. It is what it is. Like I told him, you said what you said, but I feel like you really owe some people an apology too. You might not feel like that, but I feel like that. Because I'm on this side with them, man. I know how it is. And you on this side with them, so you should know. You know what I'm saying? You said some shit, you you know. You crossed some lines, man. Then you you did a little cabin. Ain't no little cabin. You did some cabin on there. We're going to forget that. This right, this, at this point, y'all just entertain Now, I'm going to say this, though. I have a, a loved one that's been lost. And I know his family be checking it out. So I have to be mindful of that, too. But when someone's slandering you, lying, I mean, this school don't be like, look, this what happened, blah, 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 and that's it. However, I understand he got to play for the camera, uh, you know. And like I say, people loving the stories. All right. Now, this this guy, the one who set the note down for 45 days, this notorious shooter out of New Orleans that everybody's scared of, well, this, this, this gangster and the know you because he shut the know you down. Say he come around with the chopper. Up that thing out the window and say, tell him to turn around. Oh, you do who did that? <laughs> and he said, I said, 
So he said, you got something to do with that? Everybody in the city knew anything we, uh, one of the hot boys got into it, we all had something to do with it, bro. That was, uh, that had to be a rhetorical question he asked me. Let me just say that. Rhetorical, for those who don't know that, I mean, uh, I wasn't even, he wasn't looking for, he already know the answer. He wasn't looking for an answer back. It had to be. He, he posed a question and he couldn't, he already knew the answer to that. He wasn't looking for me to respond back to that. However, the man, when I told him, yeah, he said, definitely I knew it was up. You know what? I'm going to take the time to thank for me and you. Hold up, bro. You just deleted a notorious hot boy. You up a chop and tell me, tell people to back up. Don't keep coming this way. And I tell you, yeah, I'm with that. You know it's up, but you don't cut loose right there. Can y'all wake me up? It's got to be a dream, y'all. This have to be a dream. It have to be. This fool said he followed me with that chopper. Somebody that's known, as he say, set the know you down, that's going to bust his gun, and I tell him, yeah, I'm with the foolishness. He got, you know what we're going we gonna to talk about? Man, yo. Yo, but listen, y'all. The internet gangster. So on the internet, um, you know, you can paint your story how you want to paint your story. You know, you like the arm, you can be all you can be. Be all you can be, y'all. Be all you can be. Because clearly this fool, and it's a smart move he did, because he keep it, he, you know, he got his story going. This fool took and said, he upped that thing and said, back up. Tell him to back up. First of all, he didn't even see the guys coming up the sidewalk. Because the way his car was parked, it was a house, and he was by, he was facing this street, the house here. I was turning like the corner like this, and I'm giving him an eye kind of like, y'all chill out, y'all chill out, because I didn't want them to miss him, and this man wanted to have a regular talk. I didn't go meet him because at the, at that point when he said he wanted to talk, he did say he wanted to talk to me somewhere. He did say, oh, like, like I told y'all years ago or months ago, I mean, in my story about that, but I was like, what am I going to meet him for at a pick of dealers because I got him comfortable. Anytime somebody... Hit one of your friends and then pull up on you. Say, man, I want to talk. You know, he, he something wrong with him. All right, the time is 9.54, and before we let you go, let's take one last look at this morning's top stories. A man is dead after being shot overnight. A man is dead after police say someone shot him multiple times. Police are looking for leads after a man was shot and killed in Central City. We're told it happened just after 10 p.m. The murder of Sterling would leave Mosquito, Gangsta, and Dooney. Chaos would erupt at Sterling's funeral as the NOPD were frightened the attendees by drawing their attention to a red vehicle that they thought was planning a drive-by. People would scatter, knocking Sterling's grandmother to the ground. Mosquito would flee out of the back door and be apprehended by the NOPD while carrying an illegal firearm. Mosquito would be sentenced seven years for the gun case, but would be mistakenly released from traffic court. No longer able to hang out in the Noya or hustle on Philip and C, Mosquito will find refuge in the CP3 Calio housing project. A cross will be thrown. Steppers out the CP3 will strike, gunning Mosquito down, shooting him multiple times. The murder of Mosquito will leave Gangster and Dooney. With the death of two hot boys and imprisonment of another, Gangster will be on his own in these streets, with the exception of the fall partners on his case whose names won't be mentioned in this video the alphabet boys would tap gangster's cell phone and listen in to every detail of the capers that giggity would be involved in terrence gangster williams would devise a scheme to assassinate the connect and run off on the plug ran off on the floor twice before this scheme would materialize Terrence Gangster Williams and his fall partners will be taken into custody by the FBI. After doing a five-year bid, 
Dooney would come home and attempt to strong arm the young gunners on the block. This would not end well. Let's listen in to Gangster as he gives a detailed account of Dooney's murder. He wasn't living in the project no more, right? He just had shot back then. It's some of the young boys that grew up in the project, grew up in this courtyard. I'm talking about literally grew up from a baby in this courtyard. And Dooney come on from doing five years and tell these young boys, you can't sell in this courtyard. Now these dudes grew up here asleep, come out, run up and down these y'all. Now they grown, money is being gotten in their courtyard. Get money with handle, how to say handle with fists. And you gonna tell these boys, you can't hustle in this courtyard. They went as far as to shoot one of them. He survived. Now this other one, young boy, going in the courtyard one day, called out there, what's up, love, what you doing? Nah, man, a little scary little bee. I just ran. So I hear my oldest daughter, Mother Sherelle, fussing at him. How you gonna bring a bottle to a gunfight? Da 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 da. He, them little boys skating, them little boy. So now, this particular day, Dona had a bottle. And he threw the bottle to the young boy. So the young boy ran off. Every next day, I call. Storm. Ain't nothing, love, gentlemen. I'm in the coat, y'all. Six of Magnolia. Same little young boy, I come out again. Third eight this time. Shot it. Well, they hit doing in the side. Doing went up on the second floor. Him and Killer Stone. Killer Stone was holding his hand. They saved their prayer. Killer Stone's prayed with him. Amalan came, put Doon in the Amalan. On the way to the hospital, he died of eternal bleed.